Robin said I had 10 minutes. I said, that's not long enough to cover all the crashes. <laughs> it was the master, actually, that put me up for this when we were at the May Bumps this summer. And I was, uh, he was my math supervisor, and I realised it's his revenge because I was the last student for him to get three thirds. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a mistake, actually, that got me into the, into the Bluebird squad all those years ago. I did the classic thing going up um, past uh, Grassy Corner, isn't it, and up the gut, went for the bump and missed. This is the length bumps and, uh, in the first eight. And um, I was quite sure I was going to get the bump. We missed and we very, very nearly hit the bank. It was, uh, it was as close as that. It was absolutely dreadful. So the next term, oddly enough, I didn't have a crew. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd heard that the Blue Boat Cox was having a term off, so knocked on the door of, of Simon Harris's room and said, I hear you need a Cox. And he said, sure, come down tomorrow. Which happened to be exactly the same day that the college's brand new car leash was being launched. Lovely. So it was lovely then. Um, <laughs> so I had this outing with the Blue Boat and um, it went really well. And I remember to this day that the, we'd done the exercises and stuff and... Simon said, OK, let's go, and I called for a firm for 10. And it was like somebody had lit a rocket in the back of the boat. <laughs> and I now understood why you had to have strong back and neck muscles there, because it really flew. And so we had the outing, which was really, really good. And I said at the end of it, I'm terribly sorry, but I've got to rush off because Christ is launching its new boat, uh, and I need to get down there. And um, Simon said, oh, let's go and have a look. Now, no boat ever went past Christ College, other than Christ boats, obviously, because we were at the end of the river. Never mind the blue boat. So you can imagine um, the surprise on people's faces, just as the master was coming down to kind of crack the bottle on the car leash, when the blue boat goes past, <laughs> and last of all, me at the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we spun, did a starting ten, and flew back up to Golden Boathouse. And, um, and I came back... Um, to, to have some drinks just as the boat was being launched. Um, and then the week after that, I was asked to cox the car leash by Matthew. You remember this. And um, I had this, uh, I think Graham had gone off somewhere. So we had an outing, and Matthew was remarking how much my coxing had improved <laughs> over just a week. And so we were coming back up the river, and um, I think it was... It was a grassy corner. We came around there and I went straight into the back of a barge <laughs> with the one week old car leash. They're very, yeah, this was, it wasn't, yes, it wasn't very quiet after I hit it. But, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, we this, this was terrible. We had to kind of paddle back up the river with the, with only bow four to keep the stern, or what was left of the stern, kicking out of the water. Matthew, poor man, was in tears carrying the broken bits of boat <laughs> under his arm back up. But the worst of it was that I was due to leave in ten minutes to go to the Ghent International Regatta. <laughs> so I had to get dropped off at Goldie Boathouse when they were waiting in the van. And off we went to Ghent, won a gold, and um, I <laughs> came back to show it off in the buttery, which sort of caused a few divisions. <laughs> <laughs> Not long after that, we went to the Nottingham International Regatta and um, we managed to beat Australia, who that summer had been going around the European scene and had just clocked 5.42 or something, which probably isn't very fast these days, but then it was, um, it was a pretty good time. And we beat them, only because we were in lane four or something and they were in lane <laughs> one, which always gets the wind, so they nearly sank. Um, <laughs> And the, we then went on to finish the summer um, uh, doing the Onto 23 World Championships as Great Britain, which was fantastic. It was at some place in Italy. Um, and we got through to the finals, um, and uh, six or eight boats, I can't really remember, but uh, it wasn't going too well. At 1,000 metres, we were in about six, and it wasn't getting much better by 500 until uh, Bruce Philp at four shouted out from the middle of our boat, so everybody on the lake heard, we're being beaten by Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Which transformed things in our boat, and it transformed things in the Greek boat. <laughs> and we finished second in the end to Italy. Who, uh, but they were so excited they forgot to stop. And this course, this lake, was 2,010 metres long. <laughs> so uh, we nicely finished up, went on to the... Um, 
the pier, they crashed into the back, and they go at the front of their boat. So I even, I even influenced Italy crashing their boat. And then in the next year, I was, I was in the blue boat. The best bit of that was the kit, um, where Ladbrokes were sponsor in those days. And my main bit of kit was a big, thick coat that somebody Lovely. glued the letters Ladbrook onto the back, but they started to fall off. <laughs> so after a bit, I was um, Ladbrook or something like that. And it gradually became just L and K with a sort of big gap in between. And that was it. And then we also had a load of um, carnation build-up, which was this kind of energy drink you got. But we had nothing else to drink and eat but carnation build-up, so we got a bit fed up of that. Um, but I am still using the stolen towels that we pinched from the Ladbrook Hotel. <laughs> where we did our trials dinner and they're still, they're still in the cupboard and they're still going strong so they're obviously very good towels. Uh, we also had the best premises which was a lean-to at Ely that just held the boat so we had to get changed in the van. Everybody thought we had this amazing place at Ely where we go and train. It's, it's still much the same these days. Oh, so I hear but it was, uh, it was very cold as well. Um, and we had the best equipment. We had the first ergs in Cambridge. We got two in Golden Boat House. And I witnessed the first one being broken because if you let go of the handle too much, it swung round and got caught in the spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, um, Alf spent his time, instead of mending boats, putting spokes back into the air. <laughs> we needed a bicycle specialist. Um, so despite, uh, not, uh, dis I'll leapfrog the, you know, the, <clears throat> the crash thing. Despite that, I was invited to, um, to steer for the GB Olympic squad not long after the boat race, because their cops, Colin Moynihan, was going off to the Philippines to observe the elections or something like that. And so I got given Colin's keys to his Westminster flat, along with a couple of other crew members, because um, we were going to train on the, on the tideway for a while. Um, so there we were living in Colin's flat, which I thought would be fine. <laughs> Nobody knows why, but Colin was a director of Lipton's Tea at the young age of 23 or something like that. And um, he had a beautiful kitchen in this apartment that was full of nothing but tea bags. <laughs> so we had to go and get breakfast the first morning, which meant going down to the store and buying some bacon and some eggs, a frying pan, a knife. And all that. <laughs> <clears throat> we then uh, went off Whitley for a two-week training camp, um, not the same place that we did the under 23s, and. Um, Technically, it was a very, very good crew, and um, that sort of rocket launch feeling as, as we paddled up this Italian lake was pretty amazing. But it says a lot about the state of British rowing back in 1984, that when we had a standing long jump contest to amuse ourselves with in outings, I won. <laughs> <laughs> and when we went to the fair, there was a punch bag thing that you could sort of get a score on. I beat number six. <laughs> I won't name, but I might later if you give me a pint. I only had one race um, in the GB squad, and that was in a Cox pair. Now, a Cox pair is basically a chest of drawers with some oars attached. <laughs> and actually, for the Cox, it's even worse, because you're lying under the water, and you feel as though you're in a sort of mini submarine that's doing a dive. And we were at Amsterdam International Regatta. Um, and um, oh, you've been there as well. Very so Great, chance, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, very sinky water. It's very sinky water. Sinky water. <laughs> anyway, off we went. Um, all you can see is the sky. So I thought I did pretty well to get from one end to the other. And we came about fourth, which I thought was pretty good. But when I started cheering, they said <clears throat> you started off in lane four, but you finished in lane six. <laughs> <laughs> it got worse. It got worse. We came back home and I was dropped off um, at Hammersmith Broadway by the coach and the crew. We cox pair crew could fit in one car, of course. Out of and so I was dropped off on, on the busiest roundabout in the world, opened the door, and the door wouldn't close. This was a brand new Mercedes, and the door wouldn't close. And we thought I was being silly, so we all got out and tried to close the door, and the door still wouldn't close. After about 20 minutes, he had to call the AA, who couldn't close the door either. And so Graham and the other two crew members drove home with the door detached on the knee <laughs> of the two girls in the back of the car. That was the end of my GB You're wing. very good. <laughs> after that, I went to Australia. Where else would you turn? And after I'd been there a couple of weeks, I sort of got a bit bored and I thought, well, I'll look up the rowing scenes. So I got the yellow pages out 
looked up rowing and discovered that I lived very close to the Mossman Rowing Club, which I never heard of before, was actually a, a sort of a real foundation of Sydney rowing. So that Saturday, I wandered down to the boathouse and um, literally bumped into a chap called Graham Jones, who was the OUBC president in my year. And without missing a beat, he said, Good day, mate. We need you on the water in ten minutes. <laughs> So there I was. And that very evening, I found myself in the bar at the, not, the, the Mossman Rowing Club, had a nice, amazing um, clubhouse up at Cremorne. And there I was in the bar holding court as this new chap that appeared. And so I told them the story about beating Australia at the Nottingham International Regatta. And when I'd finished telling that, there was a short pause. And the chap sat next to me said, I know, mate, I was in that boat. My <laughs> <laughs> <By> round. <laughs> So, I think the thing about all those things is, although they were a long time ago, they're great memories, and um, those memories keep us together and bring us together to occasions like this, and we, and we live with them and build on them through our lives, and it's kind of wonderful to be able to share those kind of experiences. Um, Robin asked me to inspire, so I'm sorry about that, but <laughs> <laughs> I hope that it's been... It's been, those memories keep me going, and I hope that it's nice to be able to share them and, and, um, and have a laugh about them. You should um, turn up to an undergrad, undergrad, give the same speech. I don't think I could survive all the bread buns being thrown <laughs> up. Um, Too much crap. But what's behind be all of that, trouble, of course, is um, the club, and we'll be hearing about that from Grace and Robin, and behind the club, the college. And um, for me, it's something that I carry with a great deal of pride, and when people say, Where did you study? I say, Christ's. And they go, oh, and they know about it. And it's something that I carry and have carried all around the world. I work in Eastern Europe and Russia uh, a lot. And even there, um, the college is known. So what I'd like to do is say thank you to the college for standing behind the club. And I'd like you all to raise your glasses and toast the will. college. Here's the college.